What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Vince and today we are back with another reaction to different back to when a 14 year old killer tries to fake insanity. Bro, that's too young. Bro, when I was 14, I was worried about Ben 10, Legos, cartoons, and games. How was he killing people, bro? We finna find out, so let's go. You know they found this girl, right? Where? In our neighborhood, down our main street. That better not be his mama. Right off the back. That better not be his mama. That better not be his mama. Is she trying to snitch on him? It's crazy. Like, that's crazy. I don't, like, I'm not gonna lie. If one of my, if I find out one of my family members killed somebody. Bro, oh! Charles, I didn't see it. I didn't see it. No, she's, she's dead. But they bet, uh, two that times it's over important. with. Two times, it's I'm all snitching. Right this is my problem. You were the last, last one, with one seen with her. So right now, it's a lot of, it's facing you right now, son. He said, this how's that my Aiden problem? Fucci, a 14-year-old boy from Florida, being questioned by his parents at a police station in 2021. Aiden is being held and questioned under suspicion of murdering his 13-year-old classmate, Tristan Bailey. Oh, no. Something he insists he had no part in. But to understand how police came to suspect Aiden was capable of murder, we must go back to the beginning. Time skip. In the quiet town of St. John's, Florida, Tristan Bailey was just a 13-year-old girl attending Patriot Oaks Academy, dealing with all the usual challenges high school brings. Right. She was a dedicated and talented cheerleader, mm -hmm. full of enthusiasm, ambition, and determination rarely seen among other kids her age. Her classmate Aiden, however, was a different story. He get bullied. I'm sorry to say he got bullied. If he's doing dumb like dumb stuff like this, he's an idiot. Like, bro, look at him. Look at him. Puberty is not on his side. According to those who knew him, Aiden Fucci was an oddball. While his teachers noted that Aiden showed them respect and never outwardly caused trouble, his hatred of authority, arrogance, and know-it-all approach to life was off-putting for his teachers and classmates. Throughout his school life, Aiden would land himself regular suspensions, usually after getting into fights with his classmates. Idiot. Well, at first, I didn't know if it was him or his friend that was in ISS, and that's why they were in ISS, because one was saying the other one said it. Hmm? But the allegation was that Aiden threatened to throw another student out a window. That's correct. A female student. That's correct. Okay. Bro, he's big and tough with these females. But let me run into him. Y'all see this? Ah! Bro, I'm not going for that, bro. Look at this. Oh, you can't even see it. Look at... You still can't see. Just know I'm buff. I'm built like the Hulk. Dwayne Johnson. But outside of school, Aiden was displaying far more... I'm done flags. pausing. Aiden had an unnatural obsession with murder, frequently discussing the topic with his friends. According to those who knew him, Aiden often talked about his deep desire to feel what it would be like to kill another human being. He had said he like he he said like he like his knife he wanted to like slit somebody's throat and like he said it'd be satisfying. Oh my god! He's talked about killing people. He's talked about fighting people. I've seen him practice stabbing motions with his knife. And you just sat there and watched? I'm out of here. Aiden That's not my would friend. Often talk about how he would murder his hypothetical victims. He suggested that he would take them into a wooded area at night, stab them, leave. And later claim he had nothing to do with the murders. Why did he say he that? About killing somebody, he even told Zoffy Bowman how he would do it, and what he told her was, "I would walk around at night, and I would find somebody else walking at night. I would drag them in the woods, and I would stab them, and then I would pretend like I didn't do it, um, so that I could keep killing people." In her sworn testimony. Aiden's girlfriend confirmed that he had an unnatural obsession with the idea of killing Ooh. and often claimed to hear voices in his head encouraging him to murder someone. I know I'm pausing a lot, y'all. I know. We're only three minutes in. But I hate when stuff like this happens because all these people around him knew, right? Why didn't nobody tell nobody? A counselor or anything? He needs therapy. Literally, that's not normal, bro. That's not normal. We're talking about I like slitting throats. I do. I like the motions. I like. I like the thought. That's weird. He's weird. Not that. When he wasn't it. at school, Aiden would always carry a knife. One okay. of two named Picker 
and poker. That's weird. On several occasions, she said, Aiden would pretend to stab her or sneak up behind her and hold one of these knives to her throat. Mm. Despite the blatant red flags on display, his girlfriend believed it was nothing more than teenage morbid curiosity. She never thought he would go through with it. She dumb. That's gonna be Sophie coming on the skateboard towards the house. On May 8th, 2021, the day before Mother's Day, Aiden spent the day with his girlfriend and their friend Trey. The three spent the day skateboarding around the neighborhood as they often did. Across town, Tristan was enjoying dinner with her family. When she returned home around midnight, Tristan's older sister saw her on a video chat with a boy in a baseball cap, who convinced her to come and hang out at Trey's house. After an hour together, Aiden and Tristan left Trey's house. Between 1.24 and 1.45 a.m., neighborhood surveillance cameras caught them walking toward a cul-de-sac at the end of the street. It was the last time Tristan would be seen alive. He needs to be in real jail, not no juvie. Aiden took Tristan to a wooded area and stabbed her 114 times. What? Killing her before she could fight for her life. The murder happened precisely as he previously suggested. He took someone into Why the woods would she go and with stabbed him, bro? them. In his mind, he had committed the perfect crime. Only he didn't. Look at all his footage. He's, he's carrying something in his hands. 114 times is crazy because I'm dead after three times. No cap. Three three stabs to me, I'm gone. She took 114. There's something wrong with him, bro. At 3.27 a.m., Aiden ran back home barefoot, holding his shoes. When he eventually got home, Aiden got to work hiding the evidence in his room, convinced that he had gotten away with murder. The following morning, Mother's Day 2021, Tristan's family made the horrifying discovery that their daughter and sister were missing. After exhausting all options, they contacted the authorities, who put out a missing persons report and began interviewing those who knew her. That list included the last person to see her alive, Aidan. Aiden's testimony to the authorities did not inspire confidence. His timeline didn't add up, seemingly taking two hours to return home in what was, at most, a 30-minute walk. He's an idiot. He suggested that Tristan had been hanging around with a 20-something drug dealer, a claim that nobody else backed up. And then, authorities received an email with an attachment. It was a Snapchat screenshot. In the back of the patrol car, Aiden took a selfie with a peace sign, adding a text banner that read, Hey guys, has anybody seen Tristan lately? Oh! His classmates shot back, oh, reminding no. him that Aiden was the only one who knew what happened. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, bro, aren't you the one that got her into this mess? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, he would have been unadded. Oh my gosh. Dude, that's so disrespectful. He said get it back in blood. He, he basically saying, he saying, get it back in blood. That's what he's telling her parents and her, all his friends. But his sociopathic glee didn't end with just one post, as he openly implied that his victim was alive and staging this whole saga. We're, we're having fun in a f***ing cop car. Yep. Tristan. What's up, guys? Yep. Tristan, if you f***ing walk out the damn... When you see this in a month... Before police could obtain Aiden's cell phone, a runner discovered the bloodied corpse of Tristan in the woods, oh my gosh. the stab wounds visible. Within an hour, police put out a search warrant for Aiden and brought him in for questioning, leaving him in a room with his parents. At this point, it's obvious just how much trouble Aiden is in, but his cold refusal to even acknowledge it is chilling. I spoke too early. I spoke too early. Seeing all the facts now, and I clearly it's something wrong with him. But I, if I, if it was like an accident, then I'm then I'm Ray Charles and I ain't see nothing. If like my family member accidentally did it, I ain't see nothing. But this is crazy. Like if they if he, if he was crazy like this, one of my brothers was crazy like this. Best believe they going to jail. And and I and I know about it. Best believe. When reminded that his friend is dead, gonna kill me while I'm asleep. To see why he should care. You know they found this girl, right? Where? In our neighborhood down our main street. 
Is she good? No, no she's not. she's dead. That's why this is very important. It's all on you right now. This is my problem. You were the last, was the last one, with one seen with her. So right now, it's a lot of is facing you right now, son. At one point during the encounter, Aiden's parents press him to acknowledge just how serious the situation is. But he can't seem to see it. You when they ask there. if he's scared, Aiden claims he isn't, despite his fidgety hand movements. Are you not scared? Not really. Not really. I'm a little scared, but... If he didn't do nothing, I wouldn't be worried about him. No, it's not awesome. He didn't do nothing, right? Pleasure. Aiden's parents continue pressing him for his side of the story, but he remains totally unmoved offering up vague answers through a disinterested mumble and Ew. frequently avoiding eye contact. What's wrong with him? Aiden admits that he kissed Tristan and did more with her, confirming his DNA is on her. And yet, through it all, he shows seemingly no recognition of how damning that evidence could be. Later on, Aiden is again asked if there's anything that's still being uh, hit. Yo, I don't know. I honestly don't know. I'm torn. I'm torn. What do you do as a parent, bro? Do you send him to jail? That's your only child. Are you sending him to jail? I I don't know. I think mm, I don't know. Would it be bad to say I would I would um try my best to help him not go to jail and then try to get him help outside? Oh, or I think a good option would be mental, mental thing, like instead of jail, like a mental asylum or something like that. From his parents. While he insists there isn't, he takes the opportunity to try and frame Tristan as the aggressor, implying that she got aggressive with Aiden and prompting him to push her. Knowing the truth, that claim is nothing but sociopathic, and his clear lack of emotion or even apprehension is chilling to see. Does he know anything? When his parents finally pressed him for his side of the story, Aiden gave them a slight variant of what he told the police, claiming that Tristan had no intentions of going home that night. According to him, she was looking for someone to go home with and decided to get a ride with her dealer. But his body language is far from convincing, dealer. again offering the information through a bored, disinterested mumble. It sound convincing though. When Aiden's parents encouraged their son to say nothing until his attorney arrived, police raided their home. When they entered Aiden's room, they, they found discovered a, a treasure trove of smoking gun evidence. They found an empty knife sheath in his drawer, allegedly poker. Stuffed next to his dresser, they found a pair of wet Nike shoes with blood on them, oh. matching the outfit Aiden wore in the surveillance footage. And stuffed under the dresser, authorities found a blooded t-shirt and a pair of wet blue denim jeans, He's supposed to burn which matched off. the outfit Aiden wore that day. He's supposed to burn all but that. as if that wasn't enough, 
Authorities also found that the drain in the bathroom sink had traces of blood and dirt, and among his belongings, an odd notebook contained drawings of a violent and satanic nature. Yeah, he needs to go to jail. There was no question. Authorities quickly arrested Aiden on a charge of second degree murder, upping it to first degree after the extent of Tristan's wounds Dang. became clear. Then, out of the blue, Aiden's mother, Crystal, was arrested on a warrant. Smith is what? seen cleaning her son's bloody jeans. When oh. officers went into the home, they found a pair of wet jeans in Fucci's bedroom. And as we reported earlier this summer, the jeans and a drain in a bathroom tested positive for blood. Thanks to a surveillance video within the home, Crystal had been caught on tape washing Aiden's bloodied blue jeans oh. in the sink. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. First of all, why do you have cameras in your home, bro? Y'all do not need cameras in your house. Y'all need them outside, bro. Don't have cameras in your house. What are you, like, I guess you were going to record stuff, but I don't, like, no, no. Second of all, y'all know y'all would do the same thing. That's your only son, and you know he messed up. He, it could be, you'll never see him again. He could be in jail for life. Y'all would help. I know y'all would. So don't stop acting like y'all wouldn't. Bro, that is crazy though. I knew the mom was gonna have something to do with it. I knew it. Authorities quickly charged her with tampering with crucial case evidence and advising her son to lie about what he wore the night of the murder. She has pleaded not guilty to both of these allegations. Nah. In September 2021, Aiden was brought into a room at the Duval County Jail to follow the process of his pre-trial hearing but everyone viewed his behavior as erratic, if not highly concerning. Um, why am I here? I just want to talk to my mom and dad. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Is he faking? From the moment he enters the room, Aiden seems dazed and confused. But it all gets a little more unusual when he begins mumbling about demons taking his soul. Come on. Come on, you demons. I don't want you demons take my soul. You demons want to take my soul away. I don't want you demons steal my soul. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what do you do on the Zoom call? I promise you, I don't think he's trying to possess me. Y'all know that red button with the phone on it that's hanging up? I'm pressing it. I'm not going to lie. They're going to have to find me. They're going to have to find me. Because ain't don't the jury be in these Zoom calls too? Say I'm on jury dirty. Nah. Nah, I'm out of there. Since investigators found a notebook full of satanic drawings, it's not impossible that Aiden truly believed demons were attacking That's him. That's true. But this is likely Aiden's last ditched effort to secure a way out of prison. The insanity plea has long been a go-to solution for killers and psychopaths and faking a demonic possession works, except when it doesn't. Aiden would eventually go to trial for his crimes, and the judge declaring that his alleged demonic possession would not be considered. Oh. Unsurprisingly, that seemed to help Aiden overcome the demonic attacks he was allegedly suffering beforehand. The old, emotionless personality his classmates warned of returned, with Aiden barely reacting to the gruesome details of his crimes. Throughout the trial, Aiden was seen to be following the orders given to him by his attorney, barely saying a word except when he specifically had to. But that doesn't mean his performance was perfect or polished. At one point, Aiden was caught on camera laughing at something his attorney wrote on a piece of paper, undermining any apology he had made to Tristan's family. Oh uh, yeah, GG. happiness we didn't got you. last long. 4K. When Aiden's grandmother took to the stand, her tearful testimony seemed to affect Aiden more than any other. As she tearfully confessed that the boy in front of her was not the grandson she had helped raise, Aiden mm. was genuinely affected by the comments. So sorry. Sorry. I just don't need my mom back. Why would he do that though? Like, what's wrong with him? If he's not crazy, why would he do wow, that? This is so hard. This marks the only instance in the entire trial that Aiden was shown to exhibit some kind of genuine, non-contrived emotion. And, like a true psychopath, it was only because it affected him.
Mm. Tristan's family's pain had elicited no expression from him for the duration of the trial. But see the way that he responds when his grandmother fears she'll never see him again. She won't. And I, I know we're a very large Christian family, and uh, we pray all the time. And I just hope you consider a little bit. And please don't take him out of our lives forever. Uh, That's ignorant. That is ignorant. You you can't. No way. She's begging that they don't take their, her grandson to jail in front of the victim's family that he killed. That's so ignorant. That's ignorant. I don't care what nobody say. Uh, he's, he needs to go to jail. He's not crazy. He's not playing. He's for real. You know that I've died and not be able to spend time with him sometime before I go. That boy for real. At this moment, it appears that Hayden had finally realized the scale of the consequences of his actions. But it passed quickly. The judge eventually decided that Aiden's crime, which lacked any motive and was done purely to cause harm to another human, was worthy of life in prison. Oh. And Aiden, unsurprisingly, didn't seem phased by that news whatsoever. Mr. Fucci, having entered a plea of guilty to the crime of first degree murder, I adjudicate you guilty of the premeditated first degree murder of Tristan Bailey. I sentence you to life in prison. My stomach will be in my because booty. Because your age, you are eligible for a review of the sentence in 25 years. Despite oh, okay. his public apologies to Tristan's family throughout the trial and after, Aiden doesn't seem to register what the sentence meant. In his mind, it likely doesn't mean anything. He always said he wanted to feel what it would be like to kill, and he achieved that. That is so sad. Oh my goodness. I honestly, that's like a super tough situation. I don't know what I would do in that situation. Because you got to look at it from the other family's perspective too, right? Can't just look at it as if that was your son that did the killing. You got to look at it as if that was your daughter that got killed. You know what I'm saying? Like, for no reason, no, no motive, no nothing. And then his mom, can you blame her? Can you blame her? That boy, she ain't never going to see her son again. She she got minimum 25 years. And that's not even guaranteed. Come on now. Like, bro, I don't know. I honestly don't know. So y'all let me know y'all thoughts in the comments. So what y'all would do in this situation from both sides. I don't know what I would do. Like, this is this is crazy. So y'all know what to do. If y'all enjoyed the video, y'all know what to do. Make sure to comment button, like button, notify button, subscribe button, all the buttons. Because guess what? <gasps> we gone.